Hi guys, my name is Lou Fellingham and I'm so excited to be speaking with you. Uh, I don't know how you are, I wish I could see you in person and unfortunately it's another year where we can't do that. But maybe you're hanging out with a few friends today and watching this or maybe you're by yourself but I'm really pumped to be able to talk to you for just a few minutes. I've been asked to talk about the um, subject of story. When I heard this, I absolutely got excited because I love stories. I love a good story. I'm not brilliant at telling good stories, but um, I do love a good story. And actually, the Bible is filled with stories, stories about people, about their lives. And Jesus used to love to tell stories to help us understand certain things and concepts about what he, who he is and about his kingdom. And so story is such a big theme uh, for the Bible and also for you and me. So I I'm here to talk to you a bit about that. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a really old person. Have you ever seen a really, really old person? Who's the oldest person that you know? Or maybe you've sat in an old people's home. Uh, we sometimes um, throw, we've got a garden at the back of our garden. And if the ball goes over, we have to go around to an old people's home and go through the old people's home and see all these old people sat on their chairs, not really being able to move, not really being able to do anything. They love it when Jude goes in because they get to see someone really young. Um, but it's a bit bizarre. And you look at those people and you think they look like they've been old for their entire lives. You can't imagine that they were kids or that they were teenagers or that they've got a story. They just look like they've been old the whole time. And I remember chatting to um, one of Jude's friend's grandmas on the way back from school the other day. And uh, I was saying I'd been in the Isle of Wight and she's in her 80s and she said, oh, yeah. I do love the Isle of Wight. She said, it brings back so many good memories. And I said, what memories are they then? And she said, well, me and my husband used to travel over to the Isle of Wight every year with our motorbike. And we used to ride the motorbike around the Isle of Wight uh, for a race every year. And I looked at her and I thought, there is no way you were dressed in full leather on a motorbike I, with a helmet. I cannot imagine it at all. Every person has a story, whether they've they've got a long story like she has or whether like a baby their story is just beginning you have a story I have a story so my story um, is uh, quite long it's middle length isn't it okay so I was born in Australia I've got four sisters I moved around a lot when I was growing up we lived in lots of different places around the UK and then obviously over in Australia a couple of times. I became a Christian when I was five. I got baptised when I was six. I first sung in public in front of people two-part harmony when I was seven. And I think it was around that time when I was seven that I decided I love Jesus. I love singing. I want to tell people about Jesus through my singing. I joined choirs. I joined bands. I worked with YWAM. I worked with Youth for Christ. When I was 19, I moved to Brighton and I joined a band um, I loved it and the band got, went on for 20 years I got married I had three children I've released eight solo albums my mum died 13 years ago I love food I love feeding people I love running and sport I love laughing I love movies red wine coffee and sparkling water so those are just a few things about me and my story now that is not really enough. Those are bullet points, aren't they, uh, as to what my life actually looked like. You don't know how I felt in these different things. You don't know about the people that I met. You don't know about the homes that I stayed in. You don't know about the big stages and the small stages. You don't know about the people who never came to the gigs or the people who did come to the gigs. You don't know about the encounters that I had with God in different points in my life. There's so much about my story that you don't know, but God knows. Now, if I was to chat to you, what would your story be? Have there been any things in your life, like I just bullet pointed a load there, without all the filling in the gaps that you can think of that have, have been major in your life so far? Maybe it's a school that you went to, or maybe it's to do with your family, maybe you had a sibling that was born, maybe you've been adopted into a family. What is key in your life? When did you become a Christian? Or if you haven't become a Christian, is today your day? I'm going to ask you a few questions and you can respond in your home and chat with whoever you are talking to and see what you have to say. Right, ready? McDonald's or KFC? Haribo 
or dairy milk? The thing that you're really, really good at. Something that you're really rubbish at. I'm rubbish at keeping plants alive. I'm terrible at gardening, really, really bad. Favourite school subject? The thing you really hate going to, the lesson that makes the whole day really awful at school. Are you one of the people who arrives early to everything or are you always late? I call that optimism. Pepsi or Coke? Roller coasters? Oh, definitely no roller coaster. Pizza or pasta? What's the name of your best friend? Do you have a pet? If you haven't got a pet, would you like a pet? Xbox or PS4? Netflix or a book? Now already from answering some of those questions, we'll be getting a sense about who you are and what your story and your life looks like, what your everyday thing looks like. When I was a little girl, as I said, I dreamt of being a singer. I come from a little village. I don't have any kind of major connections. I, was, I lived in the middle of nowhere, you know. I didn't have big prophetic words. I was part of a small church, but I knew in my heart that I wanted to be a singer and tell people about Jesus. I wonder if today, even as I'm talking, there's something that is burning in your heart that you think, this is what I'm made to do. But you're a bit scared to tell anyone what that is. You're a bit scared to take that leap of faith and really believe that God has something for you, that God would even let you do something that you love to do. Well, I am living proof that God loves to um, let us do things that we love to do. I wonder, sometimes we think, oh, God likes to say no, doesn't he? He's, he's a bit of a no God. But actually, quite often, God loves to say yes. Psalm 34, so there's a verse in there that says, Commit your way to the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to bless you with that. But the first part of that sentence is to commit your way to the Lord. And it's funny, as you do that, as you begin to commit your way, as you begin to give those desires to him, he will kind of fine tune them into being the right desires. It's so good because it says that God fills us with his spirit and people who live by the spirit can actually follow what God has to say and not just get caught up with the stuff that we want to do. So God loves to give us those desires. But some of you might be thinking, I don't really have any desires. I don't really know what I'm good at. And in fact, everyone keeps asking me what I'm going to do with my life and I don't know. And it's really stressful and I feel like I have to be something and uh, I have to do something, I have to prove something. Well, I want to encourage you today that your story is not caught up in those things either. Okay, your story is again caught up in God giving you desires and shaping your heart. Now, the most fundamental thing for us, whether we know what we're going to do, whether we know or whether we don't know what we're going to do, is actually to love God first. That's the most important thing that you could ever do with your life, with your story. If, if people could say anything about you, if they could say uh, that that girl, that boy, they love God first. That is the most important thing above everything else. I'll tell you why, because in the Bible it says that we can be so busy doing stuff, doing the stuff for Jesus, doing the stuff for God, getting all the stuff busy, 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 busy. But actually, if, if God hasn't got our hearts, if we don't love him first, then all that stuff is just basically useless. It's rubbish. I mentioned earlier that my mum died a few years ago and I remember sitting in the room after she'd gone and the room was full of her stuff. I thought, wow, it's really true don't actually get to take any of it with you. You don't actually get to take anything with you. All you get to do is to go to the place with the, the person that you built relationship with, this wonderful, wonderful God. So it really helped me to remember, oh yeah, the most important thing is to love God first. And then out of all those other things, we can work out what we're supposed to do, what our desires are, what our dreams are, what are the practical things. And it might not look very glamorous. You might not want to sing. You might want to do something completely different. You might want to do something at home. You might want to do something uh, hidden or you might want to do something that's, that, that is like a teacher or a, a, you might like numbers and want to become a bank manager. I don't know. Everyone has something and has something that God has got planned for them. 
One of the key things in my life is to listen to God and to try and hear what he has to say so that I follow his way. So I commit my way to him and then I follow with what he says. And I've had quite a few moments in my life where I haven't known what was going to happen next. You know, when you dream about becoming a singer and you don't have any contacts, you basically have to trust God with what he has for you. And I remember there was a time when we were about to go to South Africa with my family. The kids were young. We didn't know where we were going to live properly. We didn't know how we were going to earn money. We didn't know what those next six months were going to look like. And we didn't know what it was going to be like when we came back. And somebody brought me this picture and it was of a, a basically an invisible bridge. Now you might think, well, how do you know it was a bridge if it was invisible? But they, they followed through with this image of the fact that from where we were to where God was taking us, there was an invisible bridge and it would only become clear as we took step by step by step. We'd take a step and then you could see that part of the bridge. You'd take another bit and you could see where your foot was sounds a bit risky doesn't it but actually when you know that God is the bridge builder when you know that he knows where it's going it's actually really exciting and also really reassuring it was such a great image for me I found it really really helpful to know that even when I don't know what's around the corner he does even recently I remember seeing a picture of like a mountain on a screensaver And I was looking at it and I felt God to remind me that sometimes life is a bit like, our story can be a bit like, all we can see is what's in front of us. So on this example, it was a mountain. It's all I can see. I can't see over the mountain. I don't know what's behind the mountain. I don't know what the road looks like around the other side of it. I don't know if there's more mountains. I have no idea. But he reminded me that he gets the bird's eye view. So, you know, like on Google Maps, sometimes you can get the bird's eye view over things. You can you can choose a setting on it and you can see what everything looks like from on top. Well, that's what God sees. He sees how everything intertwines. He sees what's around the corner. He sees all the different rows and the offshoots and the different things, how things fit together. For me, again, that was such a reassuring thing to know that even if I can't see what the rest of my story looks like, actually, I can trust him. You might know, not know what your story is supposed to look like yet. You might have few things. You might know your preferences. You might know what you're good at or you might have no idea yet. But, you know, God actually does know. Psalm 139 talks about the fact that he has planned all our days. It says this, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. That means he made you. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame, my being, my body, who I am, was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. That's talking about him knowing who we are before we're kind of even your mum and dad fancy each other and decide to have you. It's like before any of that, God knew your name. He talks about him knowing how many hairs are on your head and what you're going to say before you speak it and what you're thinking. Now, it's not freaky. It's actually because he already knows you and knows you so well. It's actually really, really positive. And then it says, in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. So he'd written down this story for you and this story for me, even before any of it had come to pass. 2020 was a pretty strange year, wasn't it? COVID-19 has got a lot to answer for. I thought I had plans, I had conferences set up, I had things in the diary, live events, singing events, everything like that. But that's my job, that's what I do. I speak, I sing, everything's with people. And then all of a sudden we went into lockdown, everything was cancelled and I had to kind of hit that moment of, oh God, I thought I knew what my story looked like and now I've got to trust you with this bit. Ah, this is painful. Maybe some of you have moments like that. Your exams were cancelled or your prom was cancelled or transitioning from year six into year seven has been really tough. Or maybe, um, you know, you had a school residential that you were so looking forward to and you felt like it was robbed, it was taken from you. So many things that we expected to happen actually ended up not happening in 2020, hey? 
So does that mean your story is over or, you know, there's a big gap in your story or it doesn't make sense with your story? Well, no, God has a story for you and he's known all about these little roots all the way along. All of my events were cancelled, but actually God had something else for us to do. Matthew 6, 24 to 35 talks about the fact that actually God has plans for us and that we're not to worry about tomorrow or what the future holds. We're not to worry about what we're going to wear or what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink. Really practical stuff because look how God looks after the whole of creation and how much more does he love you and how much more does he love me. He loves you so much that we don't have to worry about those things. And this really helped me because for me, I had to keep trusting him for practical things like how am I going to pay my bills, Lord? Or how am I going to make sure my children are clothed? Or how am I going to pay my mortgage, God? Or what on earth am I going to do now? Do I just sit here and wait for everything to come back to normal? But no, he had plans and I didn't have to worry about the future. I just had to rest in today and trust him in today. And you know what? God gave us money for equipment so we could do stuff online. He gave us a car when we needed a car. He gave us the money for a piano when we needed a piano to do what we were doing. He gave us um, a gift for a holiday. So it wasn't just the practical stuff. He spoiled us with stuff like that. And he showed his care and his attention. And I had this little scripture that said, don't worry, I, I know what you need. And for me, that really helped me throughout the year to to cling to this scripture that said, don't worry, your heavenly father's got you. I want to encourage you that if tomorrow is uncertain, if you don't really know what you want to do next, if you've just started out in secondary school and everything feels a bit overwhelming and, uh, and you're not really sure if you're going to make it or not, God has got you and he has a story that he's writing with you in it. Now, there's one last thing that I want to hone in on before we finish here. You know, part of the scripture that was saying in Matthew is about don't worry about this, don't worry about that, don't worry about this, don't worry about that. But then it finishes with this bit, but seek first the kingdom of God. And the thing about our story is, the good news is that actually our story is caught up in a bigger story. How can that be? Well, Our story is actually caught up about glorifying Jesus. I don't know if you've ever read the Jesus storybook, but each Bible um, story that comes out there actually leads us back into the fact that it's part of an overarching, a bigger story, and that's the story of Jesus. The story of how God comes to rescue us, how God becomes a a man, and how he um, pays the debt before God that we could never pay, so that we can belong to him, so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be set free from the cares of the worry, and we can know and have confidence that we have a future and a hope in him. Isn't that amazing? You know, we live in a world where we are told to be the center of everything. It's all about you. But Jesus says, it's all about me, but I'm going to call you into becoming part of my story. The great thing about that is also that that means we don't have to worry about whether our story is good enough or compare our lives or our stories with other people. Actually, God has a lane for each of us to run in. God has a story that he's placed that that works together for this completion of a bigger story in him. And he says, come and join my story. Don't compare yourself to anyone else, but actually run with a story that I am giving you. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you so much to lay down your story before him and say, God, how can I bring my story into your story and really give glory to you so that I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about what tomorrow brings. I don't have to worry about my uni. I don't have to worry if I'm going to get the right grades. I don't have to worry if I mess up and I make mistakes or I let you down or I make the wrong choices. Actually, you have my story and that story is caught up in you, Jesus. This is such good news. Whether you're just at the start of that story or whether you're journeying through the next part of your life, God has your story in his hands and it's safe and it's secure. And it doesn't mean that things don't go wrong. It doesn't mean that life isn't difficult sometimes. You know, I know I lost my mum. We've had difficult moments. But there's there's one last verse in Proverbs where it says this. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So trust in him and don't, don't try and work it all out. Don't try and solve it all yourself. Don't try and lean on what always makes sense. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So make him the center, commit everything to him and he will make your path straight. That means he will look after you. He will bring you through and he will unveil that story for you. Why don't we just pray together as we finish? Lord, I thank you that you know everything about us. You know every detail. You know the heart's desires that are uh, obvious and you know the desires that maybe are a bit more hidden. You know the things that seem um, like that that's the way it should go and you know the things that actually you want to unfold step by step. I want to thank you that we can trust you because you love us. You've shown your love in Jesus and you've shown your love in your faithfulness in holding us so far. I want to pray for those that are feeling uncertain about what tomorrow brings, that they will know the peace of God as they commit their way to you. I want to pray for those who who are worried about their mum and dad splitting up. I feel that there's some of you worried that your mum and dad are going to break up, your family's going to fall apart. I want to pray, God, for them to know your peace and your love in this time and to know that you have still got them, that they're still part of your story that you're writing for them. Lord, we thank you that you love us and everything flows out of this. And we thank you that we love you and everything flows out of that. We thank you that we can live with a sense of purpose and a sense of peace and covered by your grace, knowing that it's actually all about you and the things that you give us that we can then pour back out to you. I pray blessing on each of these kids, Lord, on each of the ones that are listening today. And I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thanks for listening to my few minutes and I pray that you will know God in your story. And I look forward to seeing you sometime and you can tell me about who you are and what your story is like and what's going on in your lives. I look forward to that. See ya. Bye. 